In the previous video, we already discussed the basic setup of the relative demand, relative supply analysis. Uh, in this video, we're going to check out you know, the magic power of the RDRS uh, graph. Uh, because, as we said, you know, it can incorporate, incorporate you know, um, both economies on the same graph. Okay? Um, actually, what RDRS uh, shows us is a general equilibrium analysis for a global market, okay? which in this specific case include uh, only two economies, home and foreign. Right? And remember, we said before that they produce uh, two products, uh, cheese and wine. Okay? And here, um, to understand the magic here, uh, we have to understand, you know, the uh, elements on this graph. And we said that um, RDRS analysis is just an advanced version of supply and demand analysis, right? In introductory and in intermediate level courses, we already learned that, you know, demand and supply analysis is... Uh, we're going to get a, a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve, and then we're going to find the intersection between these two. That gives us the equilibrium on the market, right? And um, here, um, we already put this, you know, RDRS in front of you. So you can see that, you know, uh, the demand curve or the relative demand curve slopes downward just like the regular one okay and um we also have the intersections between uh, rd and rs okay we'll give you two examples here one and two the, these two points okay the only difference here uh the only thing that looks weird is the rs curve okay um the relative supply curve does not take that, you know, regular upward sloping shape. Instead, it looks like a staircase shape, staircase line, okay? So we need to figure out why, okay? And um, now, let's briefly talk about RD, okay? And uh, the relative demand curve um, slopes downward, right? What does that mean? So. Here again, uh, if we pick one like this red RD curve and move upward along the curve, okay, we move up along the curve, you would find on the vertical axis the relative price of cheese to wine goes up. That means cheese becomes more expensive relative to wine, right? And on the demand side, we're looking at the consumers. Now, when they find cheese uh, becomes relatively more expensive to wine, they're going to buy more wine, more of wine and less of cheese. So, uh, for this uh, relative quantity of cheese, you find QC plus QC star um, is going to go down, and QW plus QW star is going to go up. Okay, so people buy more of the relatively cheaper products and by less of the relatively more expensive one okay so again when we move up you find on the horizontal axis we're moving towards the left so the relative quantity of cheese drops okay and vice versa if let's see let's look at the blue curve here um, as another example when we move down along this curve of course you can you can move down on the red one okay but here uh, if you move down along the blue curve you find that uh, the relative price of cheese declines in other words cheese becomes uh, relatively cheaper um, compared to wine then people would buy more cheese or have a stronger demand for cheese uh, relative to wine so we're moving towards the right along the horizontal axis, okay? So everything makes sense, okay? Makes perfect sense. 
And um, now let's look at the supply side. Okay, let's figure out this uh, staircase line, where it comes from. What what does that mean? Okay. Um, here you find that on the axis, especially the vertical axis, we have two ratios, A star LC over A star LW. And uh, down here, ALC over ALW. Um, if you flip it back, um, you would find that, you know, we already derived these two. These are two of our friends. Okay, we saw them before. This one is the, actually the opportunity cost of producing cheese in foreign. And this one is opportunity cost of producing cheese in home. Okay, so these, at these two specific um, levels of relative price, we find that uh, RS is flat, okay, or has this uh, flat um, segment or portion. Okay, now uh, you probably want to ask, how where do we find that you know the opportunity cost of producing cheese in foreign is higher than that in home? That's just our assumption. Okay, so if you wanna you know flip it, you said that the opportunity cost of producing cheese in home is gonna be higher. That's totally fine. Okay, that is totally fine. It's not going to change our conclusion anyway. All right. And uh, so here, um, once we have these two kind of uh, thresholds or critical values, then we can actually divide this vertical axis into three segments. Okay. Uh, the first one is the segment below this ALC over ALW. In other words, what we're saying is the relative price of cheese stays below the opportunity cost of producing cheese in home, which is right here. Okay. The second segment is above this. In other words, the relative price of cheese stays above the opportunity cost of producing cheese in foreign. Okay, so that's a second uh, part or segment. The third one is in between here. So the relative price stays in between the two opportunity costs. Okay, so here um, in these and next videos, we're going to discuss these three segments one by one. We will also, uh, later we will also discuss these two specific uh, values or levels of relative price. In other words, we're going to see when PC over PW is just equal to an opportunity cost of producing cheese in foreign or just equal to this opportunity cost in home, then what's going to happen okay, to the relative quantity. All right. Now let's look at the bottom segment first. As we said, um, this means the relative price is below the opportunity cost of producing cheese in Hong, and lead, lead this to say it's going to be less than uh, or below the opportunity cost of producing cheese in foreign, right? Because we're, we assumed that this one is larger than this, okay? In other words, opportunity cost is higher in foreign than that in home, okay, in terms of the cheese production. Now, because of this, think about the producers, okay? The cheese producers find that, you know, the cheese is actually too cheap. It's priced too low, even below its cost. Here, it's opportunity cost, right? In other words, the revenue they can get from the market is below the cost that they pay. So these producers will switch their productive resources out of the cheese uh, industry and put them into the wine industry. So they're going to produce more wine and less cheese. And this adjustment continues 
until all the uh, productive resources shift out of the cheese industry and they spend all of their labor, uh, which is the productive resource here, uh, in the wine production. Okay? In other words, we're saying that um, as a result, uh, you find that the, in home, the cheese production becomes zero because it, the cheese is priced too low relative to wine. Every producer goes to wine industry and produce wine. So that's why here the quantity of wine they can produce in home is going to be L, which is the total amount of labor divided by ALW. Okay? In other words, home is all in producing uh, wine. And same thing happens in foreign because the opportunity cost of producing cheese in foreign is even higher. Okay? So these producer, the cheese producers in foreign, they find it's not profitable producing cheese. Okay? So they produce zero pounds of cheese and they spend every possible uh, unit of labor they have producing wine. So the wine production in foreign becomes L star divided by A star LW. Okay? Now, once we figure this out, we can plug these four quantities into the relative quantity of cheese, this formula here. Because remember, we're trying to figure out the relationship between the price and the quantity, right? So once we plug this in, we find the numerator, it's going to be zero plus zero. Because neither of the two economies produces cheese, right? And the QW plus QW star, that means the L over A LW plus L star over A star LW, right? Eventually, we find this relative quantity of cheese equals zero because its numerator is zero, okay? So what does this mean on the graph? This means when the relative price of cheese stays below the opportunity cost of producing cheese in home, then we're going to find that here the quantity, the relative quantity of cheese is always zero. Nobody produces cheese. Okay? That's why here we uh, highlight this part of the vertical axis in purple. Okay? Because, you know, you may think this relative supply curve starts from here and goes this way, right? That is wrong. The relative supply curve actually starts from origin. It goes up along the vertical axis, or you could say it overlaps with the vertical axis, and then goes to the right, up, right. Okay? So don't miss this part, okay? This overlapping part. This simply means the price of cheese is just too low on global market, including home and foreign, so that nobody produces cheese. Okay? So the relative supply curve is here. It overlaps with the vertical axis. That may, makes it invisible. But it doesn't mean it, it's, not, it's not existing. It is. Okay? All right, so um, here we'll discuss the bottom segment okay, um, of this uh, RS. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the top uh, segment. And we're also going to look at this middle part. This is probably the most important one for us to discuss games from trade. All right.